another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits, to another diverse kind of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these witness that one and self gave to us, providing to every man the very as he will. All the one, one, and as many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized in one body, whether we be Jews and Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, of they all made to drink into one spirit. That's what we read. For the body is not one member, but many. Thirty-seven through 
verse um, um, verse, 20, verse 25 to verse number 37. The Bible says in Luke, 20, Luke 10, 25 to 37, and they were the certain Lord stood up and, and said to them, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, and he said to them, What is written in the law? How read this? Sorry, God, sorry, God.
responsibility in sharing the gospel. Our responsibility in sharing the gospel. Our responsibility in sharing the gospel. Many of us, many of us, and please for this that I've included myself in that as well. Many of us, uh, many of us have shrugged our responsibility as it relates to telling men and women about the fact that there's an eternity. I think that most of you would agree with me there. Many of us have shrugged our responsibility as it relates to telling men and women about the fact that there is an eternity. Uh, we come up with every excuse in the book as to why we cannot share the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Uh, uh, we, we have failed to share with them that they will live forever. And this is an awesome, awesome truth. Men and women that we see on a daily basis, they will live forever. Uh, the men and women that the young people that have passed away uh, this week, they're not done. The men and women that have passed away over the past couple of weeks and months, they're not done. The family members that we laugh with, and that we share special moments with over the past few years, and that we have spent uh, special moments with uh, even this week. Uh, they will live forever somewhere. And that is a sobering thought. That the individuals that you care about, the individuals that you say you love with all your heart and with all your mind, and in some cases you are willing to give your life for, will either spend eternity in heaven or they will spend eternity in hell. It is not our job to determine who is going to either place it is our job as believers this evening to share the gospel with everyone that we come into contact with. In our text, the soul was totally consumed in sowing. And that is our job, sowing the word of God. Uh, if farmers do not do their job in spreading the, the, the seed, the world shortage of food would be problematic. So listen, there's no hope for this world if we as Christians do not share the gospel. There's no hope for this world if we as Christians, Christians do not spread the word of God. Just remember, people cannot spend eternity uh, in heaven without us sharing the gospel. We have an awesome responsibility, church, this evening that has been placed on us by the Savior to spread his gospel. And this duty was given to us, uh, to the Lord's disciples, before he went to heaven. And that responsibility has been passed on to you and I on a daily basis. I mean, just think about it. We talk about everything in the book during the week. We talk about sport. We talk about politics. We talk about our favorite favorite TV shows, we talk about uh, the importance of being fit and eating right, we talk about COVID, what's happening with that, the conspiracy theorists, theorists and what they believe and we talk about masks and not wearing masks, vaccination and not vaccination, we as believers, yes, we as believers have failed to share the gospel with mankind. To spread the gospel. Jesus has equipped and equipped the disciples uh, to do this most crucial job with his Holy Spirit. And he has equipped you and I uh, with the Holy Spirit of God. I want to remind you this evening, church, that people will not be saved without the gospel message. People need to hear the gospel. Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on him? In whom they have not believed. How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? Then he said, And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel, except uh, that preach the gospel and bring glad tidings of good things. Uh, this world. This world, this world 
needs the gospel witness. This world church needs the gospel witness. Uh, uh, not only does this world need the gospel witness, you and I as Christians, we have the power of, to do what we have been commanded to do. We are today as a church, we today as individuals, we are without excuse when it comes to spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before he went back to heaven, the Bible says that Jesus said this to his disciples, says that he said unto them, uh, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight, talking about Jesus, as he was taken up into heaven. But before he was taken up into heaven, his disciples came unto them and said unto them, uh, uh, he said unto them, but uh, he said, they said unto them, shall you, will you restore at this time the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father put in his own power. But listen what Jesus said that you and I ought to be concerned with. But he shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. <clears throat> and he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. So you and I have been given a responsibility, a responsibility that you and I know the truth, that you and I have been shunning. We have not been doing our jobs as commanded by God in sharing the gospel in, a, in this lost and dying world. Jesus said to his disciple, he shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The disciples had been asking whether the Lord would at that time restore again the kingdom of Israel. Christ told them that it was not for them to know the times and the season which the Father put in his own power. But he promised them that when they received the Holy Ghost, that they should receive power to witness for him in all the world. The reason uh, we get saved is by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God comes into our lives, take a room in the Lord, and we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God for the purpose of sharing the gospel. Let me ask you a question. It's rhetorical. When is the last time you told someone about Jesus? When was the last time you talked to somebody about your favorite movie? When was the last time you talked about your favorite sports team? When was the last time uh, you talked to some family and friends and you sat around and you laughed and you joked and we laughed and we joked about everything and we talked about everything but we never one time take the opportunity to realize that that mother, that father, that brother, that sister, that friend that sits before you, they're going to die someday. Right. Whether you believe it or not, they're going to spend eternity somewhere. And we as Christians ought to be ashamed of ourselves. And we as Christians, like Nehemiah said, uh, like Nehemiah said, when the walls of Jericho were broken down, he didn't blame no one. He said, it is we, O Lord. And that old Negro spiritual tonight is applicable to us in the area of spreading the gospel. It is us. It is we. It is me. It is you that have shunned our responsibility. For whatever reason we can think about, we give all kinds of excuses. We say all kinds of things as to why we cannot tell men about a heaven that is high and a hell that is hot and an eternity that is long. You and I do not believe in hell. You and I don't believe in heaven. We you and I don't believe in eternity because as we believe in heaven, as we believe in hell, and as we believe in eternity that is long, uh, and, we were not, and if we were right with God, we would be telling people on a daily basis that, hey, listen, if you die without Christ, we'd be looking for opportunity to share gospel with them. So, Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to give you the power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the disciples have been asking this question about the end of the time. And Jesus said, don't worry about that. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost of God to make sure that you can be witnesses to me. You say, you're born again. You are sure that the Holy Spirit lives within you. The Bible 
it said, if you have the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. He said, the spirit, in Romans 8, 9, said, let the spirit of God bear witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. That Holy Spirit that is living in you, that Holy Spirit gives you the power uh, and, the, and the strength to be able to tell people about Jesus. We have the tools, you and I, you and I, we are without excuse. You say, why? We have the tools to be effective in spreading the gospel. You can't say you don't have it. You have the one tool that you need to be effective in spreading the gospel. You say, Brother Dave, what is that one tool that I have in order for me to be effective in spreading the gospel? That one tool that I need to tell my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, my co-workers, those that I'm associated with. What is the one thing that I need to be able to tell people about a, about a Savior? What is the one thing that I need to talk about eternity? It is the power of the Holy Ghost of God. Yeah. The Holy Ghost of God lives within you. Yeah. You need to yield yourself to Him so that the Holy Spirit of God can use you. I know you might be afraid. I know you might be afraid. But I want to admonish you tonight, church. I know this is not shouting ground for not just you, but not shouting ground for me tonight because we have failed in this area of being the kind of witness that God would have us to be. God knows that from the pulpit to the pew, we can do a whole lot better at sharing the gospel with a lost and dying world. We talk about everything. We get passionate about everything. You are people that are more passionate about their politics than they are about a, the soul of an individual. Right. I've never read anywhere in the Bible where heaven rejoiced over a political party uh, right. winning, winning an election. But church, I report to you this evening that the Bible says that there is there's joy in the presence of the angel over one right. sinner right. that is put into the kingdom of Almighty God. And so I, I want to offer you some courage tonight. Don't be afraid. I want to offer you some courage from the word of God. This is what Paul told young Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Listen, God has not given you the spirit of fear. So that fear that you are feeling and telling people about Jesus, that's not the spirit of God. That's not from God. That's from the devil. He wants you to be rendered ineffective. He doesn't want you telling people about Jesus. He doesn't want you to talk about the cross. He doesn't want you to talk about the death. He doesn't want you to talk about the burial. He doesn't want you to talk about the resurrection. He doesn't want you to talk about that place that is called hell. He doesn't want you to talk about Calvary. He doesn't want you to talk about the shed blood of Jesus the Christ. He doesn't want you to do that. It is he that is trying to inflict upon you the spirit of fear. But Christians, you have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind tonight. Jesus said, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor be his prisoner, but thou be partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Listen to me, church, tonight, we're all guilty. We all need to fall prostrate on our face, whether you do it in your home, whether you do it in your car, but we ought to be ashamed tonight of ourselves and not spreading the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Listen, uh, we ought to be ashamed, uh, ashamed of ourselves. Uh, uh, God has not given us uh, that spirit of fear. God has not given, uh, given that spirit of fear, but it's the devil. Let, listen, let us not be ashamed to tell people that we are born again. Let us not be ashamed to tell people that Jesus is saved. Jesus saves and Jesus keeps saved. Let us not be ashamed uh, to talk about Jesus the Christ. Listen, if you're ashamed of Christ here, yeah, he will be ashamed of you someday. Right. You're ashamed to tell people about Jesus. You're ashamed to tell them you're saved. And a lot of Christians are ashamed to share the gospel. I don't know. One of us here tonight might be ashamed. One of us here might, tonight might be fearful. But that's not the position that God wants any of us in. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to be ashamed of what he's done for us. Mark's gospel, the writing of Mark says, whosoever, listen to me church, listen, listen really carefully. You think we'll be done with all the reasons we're going to cry in heaven. 
Listen what the Bible said, whosoever shall be ashamed of me. This is what Jesus said. Whosoever shall be ashamed of me. Are you ashamed of Jesus? You say, not me, but when was the last time you told someone about Christ? Why didn't you do it? Was he ashamed? Were you ashamed to tell him that you were born again? Listen, this is a new Christians of the, of the, of the, of the, of the ages have had to battle the situation of fear and power and being ashamed of Christ. Christians have been put to the test, have been burned been in the state, have been sown asunder, have had their lives trampled out. Why? Because their people wanted them to deny, deny Christ. People wanted them to be ashamed of the Lord Jesus. Read about the Hebrews chapter number 11. They wanted them to deny him and be ashamed of them. But those Christians stood bold and they refused to deny Christ. You say, I've never told anybody that I'm not a Christian. That's the problem. You've never told anybody that you are a Christian either. You've never taken the time to tell somebody that Jesus loves them. You've never taken the time to share the gospel. I'm talking to all of us here this evening. From the pulpit to the few, we should be ashamed of ourselves. The Bible says, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my word in this, listen what Jesus described it. You shame of me in this what? Adulteress. In this wicked world, you are shame of Jesus. What a convicting of our own heart. God is your shame of me in this adulterous generation. And sinful generation, Jesus calls it. There's no hope for this world outside of Jesus. He said, I should be ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous and sinful generation. That's what Jesus said. Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh into the glory of his Father with the Holy Angel. You see why you can cry? Jesus, when you get in the presence of my Father, I'll be ashamed of you. How sad. How sad it is. Because we are afraid to tell people about Jesus. We are afraid. I'm not talking about stealing your boss time and telling people, but you have coffee break, you have your 10 minute break, your 15 minute break to work, and you talk about everything about except Jesus. Your family members come over to your home and you laugh and you joke about every topic in the book, but you never look at them the way Jesus looked at them as eternal souls headed for eternal destiny. You never look at them the way a songwriter looks at them as people who need the Lord. You never look at them the way Jesus, we, we, we never look at them the way Jesus looks at them as, as a field that is white unto harvest. Oh God, help us all to have a change of heart and mind. You wonder why our church is not growing? It's because Christians, we are not spreading the word of God. And you start, you start pointing your finger one place or the other. Point your finger right at you. Yeah. Yeah. And say, it's me, oh Lord. It's me, oh Lord. Yeah. That's not bringing, uh, not bringing somebody behind me to the house of God. It's me, oh Lord. That's not telling somebody about Jesus and making sure that the baptismal waters are stirred. It's me, oh Lord. It's me that's standing in the need of prayer. Yeah. Not the pastor. Not the deacons, not our sisters, not our brothers. It is me. It is me, oh Lord. I'm guilty as charge. Paul says, as he wrote to the Roman Christians, he said, For oh, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What else? Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We are the Christians. You have nothing to be ashamed of. He said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Ethiopian eunuch was looking for the answer. And I'm telling you, people up there are looking for the answer. But the only answer is Jesus. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Listen to me, there's no criticism said in this thing. He said the only alternative to soul winning, 
sharing the gospel, the only alternative to soul winning, sharing the gospel is what you and I have been guilty of for so long, disobedience. Disobedience. We have been disobedient to Christ in telling those that we come into contact with uh, that we've been guilty of not saying that the Holy Spirit opened a door for me to be able to share the gospel with this man, this woman. Open the door. Give me the opportunity to share it. Curtis Hudson said, the only, the only thing, the only alternative to that is disobedience to God. God help us all. God help us all to look for an opportunity to share the gospel. Nobody is exempt. From the youngest to the oldest that know Jesus Christ as Savior, none of us are exempt. All of us that have not been sharing the gospel, we are guilty of not honoring the words of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jack Isles, before he went on to heaven, said this, and this is still applicable today, Applicable in the Bahamas, he said, old fashioned, old fashioned, old fashioned, spirit filled, Christ honoring, sin hating, soul winning, Bible preaching is the hope of the church. Amen. It is the hope of the nation. It is the hope of the world. That has not changed. We are responsible for much, we Christians. We Christians are, are responsible much of the problem in our society. Why? Because we have been extremely disobedient in spreading the one thing that can change a man's heart. We have been guilty of failing to spread the one thing that can, that can, can bring peace to families. We have been, we have been failures of doing the one thing that can bring stability to society. That is the word of God. We have been guilty of not spreading the word of God, each of us, we must answer to God for it. We are guilty. That was my introduction. I will close with this one point here. The responsibility in heralding the word of God. Two, two ways seeds were spread by the way. The soul would take seed to the bag and he would spread it. The second way was they would put it on an animal, put a bag on it, put holes in the bag, and let the animal walk along in those areas, and the seed would spread that way as well. In our parable, in our text, be mindful that the parable, of course, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. When Jesus told these stories, it was usually based on an example that he had seen in his daily ministry. In this story, the sower represents anyone sharing the word of God. The seed in our story is symbolic of the words of Almighty God. The sower represents us and our responsibility in carrying out the Great Commission. In a recent prayer meeting, just yesterday, as we sat out the prayer meeting, we fellowship each of us. Had to come clean with God. God even hears the sins in our life. Remember it's not? We all have to confess that we have been more excited. You hear me? We have been more excited in spite of COVID protocols. You hear me? In spite of the dangers of proof of COVID 19, we were so bold that we would knock on people's door and share the vision of our political parties. But we make every excuse in the book as why we can't go knock on a door for Jesus. Something has got to be wrong with us. And that's the important thing. Yeah. And we confess our wrong. I read this morning that Solomon was building the temple. And as he completed the temple, and he prayed, and he prayed for so much, the glory of God so filled the temple that the priest could not go in. God told him, Second Chronicles, let me see if I can read that for you. He told God told him, and I'll read a, a little portion of it for you. God told this great preacher, he told him in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 19 to 22, listen to these verses. 
But if he turn away, that's what he did. And forsake my statutes and commandments, that's what we have done. He says, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. That's what a lot of people do. We talked about how Christians ought never to put politics in the front of their brotherly love for, for one another. Right. That's right. a shame and a disgrace yeah. for any Christian to get mad at the next person because there's here P O M for them. Who cares? Only what you do for Christ right, is going to last. Right. Not going to ask you if you was a PLP, FNF, PLA, no, or any other thing. He's going to ask you, what did you do with teaching the way I live and the way I walk and share my message with this lost and dying world? That's not to remove us from our obligation, our civil duty to, 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 to be involved in politics for the day. He says, verse 10 again, will I plunder out by the roots? Out of my land which I have given them and the south which I have sanctified in my name. Will I cast out of my sight and will make it be a proper and a bad word among all nations. He said, the south which has high shall be a stock by God. Yeah. You see that? God says, if we're not careful and we don't do what we ought to do, the church of Jesus Christ will never be destroyed. But there's a danger of this local assembly being gone. If we don't do what we ought to do, listen to what he said to Solomon about his house. He said in this house, listen to what God said, but this house, and this house which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it. So listen, so that he shall say, what happened? What happened? What hath the Lord done unto the sand, unto the south? And it shall be answered because, wow, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, we've been brought out of Egypt. Yeah. I'm talking about spiritual Egypt. Yeah. We've been saved out of this world. And laid hold on other gods and worship them and serve them therefore. And he brought all these people upon them. We gotta be careful. We follow the commandments of God. We do what God said. You could be a contributor to the minds of this local assembly. You better get busy. I better get busy telling people about Jesus. You better, you better get busy bringing family to Christ and stop bickering and complaining about so much foolish thing. You better get busy and sharing the gospel. You better begin to stand bold as a lion and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are responsible for much of the foolishness much of the problems we see in our society and the responsibility of spreading the word of God is ours. We have to spread it. If we don't do it, then who will? If we in corporate and individual spreading the gospel get back to which we have been called to do as believers. The Bible says, Jesus says in Luke 14, 23, and let this sink into your heart. He said, the Lord said unto his servants, thus you and I, go into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. You know why it's not filled? It's because we're not doing our job. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preacher. I do not care what no one says to you or me. We have a responsibility to spread the word of God. God knows I have to do better in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God's Holy Spirit burn in my heart moment by moment. That there is life after death. May I constantly ask God's Holy Spirit to burn in my heart that there's life after death. That will burn in my heart as I see men, men will either live in heaven forever or perish in eternal punishment. I have to believe that. I must share that. I have noticed another gospel in the last 20 years. You have any church? Listen up and pay attention. I've noticed another gospel in the last 20 years. Which is not another gospel but a false, but false teaching. The pulpits, I'm talking about the pulpits and the Bahamas, pay attention. Just listen. I guarantee if you listen long enough, you say, boy, that's the truth. The pulpits have become consumed with telling people how great they are. The pulpits have become consumed with telling people how great they can become. The pulpits have been consumed with telling people to pursue wealth. However, 
with the brevity of this life, why are we preparing people to live here rather than preparing them to live in eternity? So what if you can gain this whole world and do not lay for yourself treasures in heaven? What a difference in the message of the Bible and what is being shared today. Do we need money? Yes. Is money bad? No. But we ought to have the right perspective and understand that you ain't carrying none of it with you. Only what you have done for Christ is going to last. Please do not, church, I beg you this evening. I beg each of you, please do not give up on spreading the gospel. To give up, uh, don't do it. For us to give up is for us to be disobedient. This church is to grow spiritually. If this church is to grow spiritually. I'm talking that we have to mature spiritually. And if we are to, uh, we, if we are to expand numerically, I'm talking about where the chairs are filled. If the chairs that we are going to be filled, each of us need to mature spiritually. Right. And if we are going to mature spiritually, it starts with us telling God he's right and we're wrong. And we start telling others. And when we mature spiritually, and we go grow spiritually, and we start to get, uh, start to mature spiritually, to go spiritually, then we'll, we, you'll see this place begin to grow numerically. So it is the chief business of all of us. It should be the main pursuit of all of us. Telling people about Jesus should be the chief duty of each and every one of us sitting in here tonight and every in every Christian listening by Facebook or watching by Facebook, our chiefest responsibility should be to tell people about Jesus. The Savior from ascending to heaven told his disciples that they were given power to be spreaders of the gospel. The problem is not with the Holy Ghost power, but in our failure to be obedient and to completely yield to God's Holy Spirit. So, I want to bring this to close tonight. I challenge you tonight. We've not been coming to the altar, but I challenge you tonight to make a commitment to confess Christ. Tell Christ you are, he's right and you are wrong. Tell him he's right and you are wrong. Tell him you are failed. We need to tell him that we are failed. And he said, if we come and confess our sins to him, yeah, he's amen. faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness of sin. That is a start. Yeah. Tell him that you need the Holy Ghost of God every day. That people come into your presence to remind you that they're eternal souls headed for eternal destiny. Tell him you need a change of mind. You need a change of heart. You need to refocus. You need to refocus on carrying on the Great Commission. I challenge you tonight to make a commitment to Christ. To confess Christ before one family member. Do you hear me? I challenge you this week. I challenge you this week. To tell one family member. I challenge you this week. To tell one friend about Christ. I challenge you this week on Facebook. To tell the world that Jesus is coming again. Don't be ashamed of him on Facebook because you don't want him to be ashamed of you. I challenge you in all those groups you're in, all those groups, I challenge you to see. To put out there the gospel, how to be saved, how to be born again. Tell the people this week, this day, tell them. Say, I challenge you. Put it away in the chat room. During the break of work, tell God what a co worker you're doing. That you can share the gospel with and tell them what eternal punishment, but tell them with the love of God. Beg God to do a work in your life this week and to change your heart and your mind. Beg Him to do it. I challenge you. I guarantee you. Message, come clean with God. I assure you that on Wednesday night, the preacher said he did. I assure you that people are not even know how to do it. There'll be testimonies among testimonies of people 
that we will share the gospel with this world. Church, we have to get back to what the main thing is. Winning the people to Christ was so important. This lost world was so important that Jesus left heaven, came to earth, and died for all of us. He didn't send an angel. He didn't send a cloud. He didn't create somebody to come. The Bible said, for the Son of Man, God came in the flesh, dwelled among us, died, suffered, bled, was crucified for the whole world. Because why? One of us was not important. Tell somebody. Tell somebody this week. I'm sure. I know the Holy Ghost of God. I know the Holy Ghost of God is just flashing people in your mind right now. But you fail to tell, tell, tell. Spread the word of God. Invite somebody to you. Make it your business to say, I will not come there next week unless I bring somebody with me. We are without excuse. None of us can give God any excuse. Why? We are share the gospel. That's our job. That's our duty. That's our responsibility. That's our call to them. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Father, thank you for speaking to my own heart. Lord, I pray for you. Lord, I've got to do that. I've got to go to the heavens and the highways. Lord, I've got to compel men to come, women to come. I've got to do better. Lord, we've got to do better. Lord, we're failing. Not because of you. Lord, because we've been ashamed. Because we've been fearful. God, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of strong. We confess that you're right. One who still doesn't know your Savior, you're watching. You do not know Jesus. I beg you, bow your hell deserving head wherever you are. And ask Jesus to come in your heart and save you. I know you're saved. We ask you.